Hello and welcome to my VV Gamma graphics tutorial. So into this tutorial, I'm going to share how I made uh, this graphic. So yeah, I've been posting these kind of stuff on Instagram recently, just to figure like, how to say, play around with different techniques to try to figure out what kind of graphic would be cool. Like if there's any ways that I can, and every day, one hour, just trying to, uh, how to say, improve myself, or, like stress myself, like what's the training. So I've been doing this daily series and in this one had a quite a lot of impact from my friends saying cool and this was something that just popped up and it's nothing actually that complicated so I wanted to share uh, how to, how I made this graphic. By the way, if you haven't followed my uh, Instagram, please follow me. It will be a big support. My, yeah. So this is the graphic and this is how it looks like and it looks like, I think the beautiful part of this is that it looks glass kind of shader but it's actually not so what I'm doing here is this is the patch I uh, said so I'm gonna pull this guy out here so this is how it actually looks like I mean the bottom part here is just a set uh, like how to say pack up post effects and things like that so they they don't do much stuff I mean this skybox uh, the spotlight actually does some sort of add a bit of flavor on it but it's not the biggest one it adds this uh, colors different colors onto it so if I change these colors it makes it look different as well but this is not the important part I think the important part is this material part I've made so it's like adding different parameters and, it, and I think the biggest part is this Oclab to RGB stuff so I'm going to explain how to use play with these uh, to yeah reach this graphics so yeah let's get started so I'm going to start everything from scratch I'm going to delete this patch because I don't need it now and then I'm gonna oh, add a scene window. So I need a stride. And then I need a scene window here, of course. Then I'll get this one out. And then I'll add a fuse because I'm gonna be using the noise for the material. And then for today, I won't do like all the setups that I did, but I'll just add a cylinder. And I'll add a, yeah, just a normal cylinder should be fine. And then the root scene. I'm not using the skybox light for today. I'm going to use, I'm, I'm going to be using the ambient light and a grouping, stride grouping and add ambient light. I might add a directional light. I'm not sure if this works well or not, but I just added. And then yeah, let's connect these to the control L and you can align these nodes. Uh, let's, yeah, this one. Oop, poop, poop. Yep, so this is a cylinder. I need a bit of, uh, how to say, the tessellation. So right now it's a bit too jaggy. So I'm going to add like 100 tessellation here. So it looks a bit more smooth. And I don't need the height actually. So base radius, height, yeah. So this one I'll make it small. So it looks like the, the mesh that I used for that graphic. I'm not going to spread these because I'm too lazy for that today. I might later on, but not sure yet. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a PBR material, but not the normal one, but the fuse one. Uh, there's no much reason using these. Actually, I think you can achieve the same graphic using the other one. Oh, no, maybe not. I'm using the Oak Lab to RGB. So basically, this is the material that we're using. I mean, if you just add this material, it looks like this. I think the most interesting part is that I'm using this uh, transparency node here and this one called blend fuse. So I'm adding a transparency here to make the material look transparency, but not entirely transparency. I'm adding a node called a noise, uh, should be 2D scalar. Yeah, so I'm adding a noise here. So this is a 2D scalar that we're using today. Then if you connect this one to blend, we can actually control like the transparency part based on the noise. Oh yeah, but it's not working right now because I need an object space. It doesn't know what, where to actually apply the noise. So add an object. Here we go. So this how it looks like. We can actually, might be visible using the skybox light. So I just use the skybox light instead of ambient light. And yeah, I just get this back. So as you can see right now, it's the noise applied to this blend transparency already looks pretty nice. So this is how I actually achieved that graphic. 
It's actually quite simple though. <laughs> so this is all I did. So the rest of the part is like I'll clap to RGB, but there's this chroma channel ones. This should be in diffuse as well. This one's pretty nice. I mean, I mean, I don't fully understand what Oclub does, but it gives you more like how to say precise gradient. So if we we usually use this HSL to RGB, but the problem with this one is that oh, is it this one? Yeah. The problem with this one is that, for example, each saturation to one and lightness to 0.5 or something. If you move this around, as you can see, the I say the luminance here in this gradient that HSL is actually controlled is a bit different. Like this one looks a bit brighter than, than the blue that we had. This one looks a bit darker than the other ones, right? So it's not really like accurate to your eyes. I'm not really sure how to explain this, but Oculab gives you a more like nicely trans, uh, like, like smooth, because it has a light, light uh, input. So you should say, okay, I want the, brightness or lightness to be like 0 0.2 then the rest of that you try keep the lightness on this color as as close as it could be so it, it, it when we apply gradient using alt lab to rgb it gives you more natural feelings for the gradation the thing with alt lab is that um so it, i think it's theta chrome yeah let's just I'm not really sure, but if it's zero, yeah, it's so it looks like if you go down and up, like I think it's blue to green, I'm not really sure. And then if you go to the chroma, it's red to green. Oh, so this one is red to green. This one is something else. I forgot what it was, but there's also an oak L light hue L H R or something that you can also control the entire HSL or like hue based on the first input and then there's lightness and chroma, I guess. LC, LC, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> but it would be nice to have that. I try, I tried it, I tried to make it on my side, but I couldn't understand the math, so I just gave up. Anyway, so I'm using this Oak Lab to RGB and then I'm connecting this noise here. And then let's just precise the chrome and the lightness here. So I usually use it lightness of 0 0.5 and then chroma 0 0.1 to get this gradient. And then I'll add an integer to the noise. I'll an integrator to the noise just to make the noise move around, make it really, really slow so that it's not too fast. I can actually make it a bit slower. So 0 0.001. Yep. And then let's make it a bit yeah, smooth. And then, yeah, let's just keep playing. So th this is like the basic setup. So the rest of all is just you playing around with it. Um, I don't need the uh, skybox light anymore. Yeah, so it already looks pretty nice. Like, right. It has this gradient texture on it. And I change a bit of frequency, like to like 0 0.5 or something. Amplitude, I just set it as default. And if you like, you can also change the infraction and the noise type here. I'm not going to change it for now. It already looks pretty amazing. Yeah. So this is how I added this gradient texture onto it. And the rest of the stuff I did was actually just adding some point light here. No. Spotlight, was it? Yeah, I'll just add some spot light. It could be a point light. And then I'll uh, surround this with uh, four each because I want to add like multiple. I'm too lazy, so I'll just add some random spread, position, and then I'll get this one out group, spectral, stride, and then I'll get multiple spotlights in the scene. It's random spread applied. So I like, I just had like three of them and then size will be a bit bigger. Yep. Okay. So I'll add it. Also add a different color. I'm too lazy for this one as well. So I'll just add a linear spread. No, it could be random spread actually. I'll just add random spread with same spread count, and then I'll add an HSL here. Uh, yeah, from HSL, and then I'll add these ones to the color so that. Yep, and right now it's the same color. Hue saturation lightness is 0.5. Yeah, let's just change the width width here. Yep. So now we've got different colors. I think the target, yeah, target is at the center. Intensity is fine. 
range should be fine. Let, let's see how it looks like. So if we press F4, you can actually see where the where the random spreads are. I don't really like how, where it is. I want it to, yeah, this looks better. Oh no, 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 it's coming from the same angle. Actually, oh yeah, this one looks a bit better, but let's try, just try to figure out like a better position that gives different lights from different perspective, or maybe just add some more. <laughs> yeah, this is better. So yeah, so this one gives you a better lighting, I guess. So I'll just use this one and then go back with S4. Yeah, so now we've got different colors applied on it. Now we can also change like the lightness of the HSL. Oh yeah. So with this, you can, we can get a bit more gradient, for example. If you like it, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. And I'll add this ambient light instead of the skybox light because this is more controllable. Yeah. Okay. This looks fine. I think I'll add a bit of intensity onto this. Yeah, this gives us not better, but it's it looks it looks okay. So I, yeah, this is basically how I did. So rest of all what I can do here, I mean is just adding like for each loop on the cylinder to add multiple cylinders. Uh, but one problem that I realized on my, it's, I think it's because of my setup, I'm not really sure. But when I add uh, the cylinder to for each and connect this PBR material there, it sometimes crashes. I'm not really so sure why, why it keeps happening, but I, I can try it. I hope it doesn't. Hmm. So here, and then I'll get the uh, group and spectral stride, and then I'll connect this one to the root scene, and then I'll add a random spread again. I mean, if you want to design your setup, then you should rather not use random spread, just use, I'll just do that for now. Translate, and then 3D transform, and I'll stop using random spread. Instead of that, I'll use translate, and then I'll get these ones out, and I'll say I want three of them. And then I'll move these guys around. And I might need a rotate node as well. So I'll add a rotate 3D transform and then apply this rotate below the transform so that it's based on the center. Yep, yep. Okay, this looks better. Now I know where I want things to be. So this just added somewhere. Yeah, somewhere around here should be fine. Yeah, I should change the scale, but I'm too lazy for that. Okay, so this is where I want things to be. And then I'll try connecting this PBR material directly to the cylinder. Oh yeah, we got it. So this is how it looks like. And basically without this uh, spotlight, I think what you basically see are the same, like the noise applied are the same. So what, sh what we should actually see here should be the same, yeah. As you can see, this part and this part is the same. So I, I rather suggest adding this rotate so that it looks like it's a bit different. That's one technique that I used here. And the second technique is, of course, this spotlight so that it gives, the light gives a different texture on different, how do you say, cylinder, like a plate, I would say, so that it looks, it looks like they're all different, but they're actually not. Or you can add different noises, for example, like this one, the reason why it looks the same is because, yeah, we're using the same noise. But if you use different ones and then apply PBR material per age, then it might look more interesting. I mean, if that's what you want. Okay, so a few more steps. Uh, one thing that I've added on the... I've also played around is this material parameters on the PBR material. So... If you right click here, I've already explained this on the previous tutorial, but they have like uh, occlusion or subspace surface scattering or like the metalness even. So if you move these around, you can actually see the difference uh, onto it. Usually we don't use something like in between, usually metalness, I think it's like 0 0.5 or one, depending on the surface that you want. And the roughness also, we don't we usually use the parameters in between, but I mean, we're playing around with graphics, so it doesn't really matter if it's, even though if it's different than what we have in real life. Uh, and then we have uh, 
occlusion, occlusion, or oh. occlusion, yeah, occlusion fuse. So I connected this one here as well. I felt like it gave a bit of difference changing this occlusion parameter actually. Yeah, so as you can see, it, it looks a bit different. I'm not really sure what occlusion is actually doing. Maybe it's tech doing technically something correct. Maybe not. I'm not really sure, but I'm playing around with this was also interesting. I also added a subsurface scattering fuse node as well. And I'm not really sure this is how subsurface scattering should look like, but it give, also gives you a nice feeling onto it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, adding a few different nodes to figure out what could in look interesting. You can also add some emissive, emissive here. You can try playing around with different blend type, like transparency type. And we can, of course, add some noise to make it look a bit different. One technique that I really enjoyed was not just using the cylinder, but adding different objects, for example, like a box here. Like, I'll add a sphere. For example, and then applying this material and then adding another root scene. Sorry that the patch is a bit messy now. I mean, having different types of object in the same scene, like at least two, makes your graphics look a bit more rich. So this is how it looks like now. Yeah, applying noise on this sphere is also pretty nice. Let's change a bit of the frequency maybe. Depending on how you like, we can also add some smooth step in between to make the noise a bit more smooth or like there's, there's tons we can do. So yeah, uh, I think we're all good. Uh, this is how I made it. Uh, this graphic, I mean, looks a bit different, but I mean, the technical part is the same. So this is how I achieved that graphic that I posted on Instagram. Uh, again, please follow me on Instagram if you have an Instagram account. If not, please just support me on this YouTube channel. Oh, oh, and I have one more news. I'm planning to take a, 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 a take a huh? hmm? I'm planning to be off for like a month. So I've been continuing a tutorial series for a while, and I got kind of like I ran out of some tutorial topics and also I'm I, I'm things are a bit messy right now so I'm trying to rearrange things like setting up Patreon and that kind of stuff to to make myself be able to continue this kind of stuff so um, yeah my tutorial will be uh, I'll be quiet for like a month maybe doing some daily stuff but not not uh, at least releasing this tutorial I might release one uh, sharing how I actually study VV Gamma so like how I actually learn this kind of stuff. Like, like, did I watch tutorials? Were there any place that I could learn? Things like that. So I am planning to edit one, that kind of video, but else I think I'll be quiet for a month, come back with some different topics to share. So yeah, that was it for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.